what's common between an Austrian driving license, a Japanese phone plan, and free trial offers? The simple answer is they all exploit the opt-out framing effect to benefit from the irrational behavior of us humans. In my last video, we talked about the gain frame and the loss frame of the ferocious framing effect. In this video, we'll talk about another aspect of framing effect, i.e. opt-in frames and opt-out frames, with some real-life examples of how private corporations and governments alike use these frames to nudge the decisions of the common public. Let's start with a simple question. Why are organ donation rates around 99.98% in Austria, but only about 12% in Germany? Austria and Germany are very similar in terms of language, culture, and GDP per capita. In fact, Germany spends more on healthcare at around 10.5% of their GDP compared to Austria, which spends only around 9% of their GDP. And also, German economy is much bigger. So in real terms, Germany spends many more euros per capita on healthcare than Austria. Despite all that, the organ donation rates after death in Austria are around 99.98%, but in Germany, they're only at around 12%. Why? Are the Germans less generous than their southern neighbors? Or is the healthcare infrastructure in Austria much superior than Germany's? Or does the government of Austria spend much more on promoting, advertising the benefits of organ donation after death? No, none of these. The real answer is the opt-out framing. The biggest contributor of organ donations in most countries are healthy people who are brain dead after a road accident, commonly called the motor vehicle deaths. So the real secret behind the almost perfect 99.98% organ donation rate in Austria and an abysmal 12% in Germany lies with how these accidental deaths are dealt with how the organs of these people who unfortunately pass away in a road accident, how these people's organs are then used for the public good. So the frames that the German and the Austrian road authorities use are different. Austria offers the opt-out frame, while Germany offers the opt-in frame to aspiring driving license holders in case of an accidental death. And this simple factor contributes to this big difference in the organ donation rates in both countries. What's an opt-in frame and what's an opt-out frame? In simple terms, an opt-out frame is where you're automatically included as a member of the group by default. But if you want to be out of the group, you must explicitly choose to opt out of the group. You must do something such as sign a document or fill a form and submit or check a box on some document. So, you must do something to opt out of the default setting. Now, the opt-in frame is the opposite of the opt-out frame. In an opt-in frame, you are not a member of the group by default. If you want to become a member of the group, you must explicitly choose to opt in into the group. In the opt-in frame, you must do something, such as sign a document or write a letter or tick a box on an application form to opt in. You're automatically opted out and you must do something to opt in to become a member of the group. So in principle, if you don't want someone to become a part of a group, you can make opting in very difficult, but opting out very easy. On the other hand, if you want someone to be a part of the group and stay in the group, make opting in very easy, but make opting out extremely difficult. Now, behavioral psychologists have done field experiments on default choice, and that has unraveled two important discoveries about human nature. First, we humans are inherently lazy when it comes to exert mental effort. And second, the default option is bloody sticky. It doesn't matter if the default option is opt-in or opt-out, it's very sticky. If you are already opted out of a group, you just stay with being opted out. And if you're already opted in, you just want to stay opted in. So it's very, very sticky. Default options are very sticky. Now, let's see how the opt-in frame and opt-out frame apply to the driving licenses in Austria versus Germany. When a person gets a driving license in Germany, they're given an option that goes like this. 
there's a box and it says please tick this box if you want to donate your organs in case of accidental death now most people are too lazy to tick the box as a result most people can't contribute to the noble cause of organ donation in case of accidental death now the austrian government did something sort of magical when a person gets a driving license in austria they're given an option that goes like this please tick this box if you do not want to donate your organs in case of accidental death as expected people don't like to tick boxes people don't want to read things and think about it carefully and then decide to tick or not tick the boxes people don't like to tick the boxes people want to stay with the default option which is not ticking the boxes so in case of germany people don't tick the box and so they stay opted out because the choice given by the German DMV, the German traffic authorities, is you are opted out and you need to exert mental effort to opt in. You need to tick the box. In case of Austria, the driving license holder is told you are automatically opted in and if you want to opt out, you have to exert mental effort. And in both cases, people don't want to exert mental effort and so they just stay with the default option. Defaults are very sticky. So, just by inserting two extra words, Austrians have succeeded in getting to 99.98% organ donations, while Germany, despite being a bigger economy, despite spending more per capita, both in terms of percentage and real euros, lags behind at just around 12%. So, basically, the Austrian government strategy is automatic opt in, difficult opt out. And so that you remember it in an easier manner, I have invented an acronym, I do, A-I-D-O. Automatic in, difficult out. That's the Austrian government's frame. The Germans use difficult opt-in, easy opt-out, D-I-E-O, D-I-E-O. Difficult in, easy out. Now, let's see how private corporations use the I do frame to make more money out of you. Another example of how companies use the I do frame is phone carriers. For example, in Japan, you can simply go to a telecom provider shop to enter into a two-year phone contract. And I think that's true for most countries. All you need is an ID card and a credit card number. And within 30 minutes, you can become a subscriber. That's it. You are in. Easy peasy. So, easy in. Once you are in, telecom companies use the I do frame. How? First, if you do nothing at the end of the two-year contract, then automatically you'll be signed in for the next two years with the same carrier. You don't have to do anything to continue with current phone company. No wonder most people in Japan stay all their life with the same phone carrier. I've asked around 20 Japanese friends and almost all of them have stayed with the same carrier ever since they got their first mobile phone about 15-20 years ago. So that's the automatic in part. How about the do part, the difficult out part? Here's how telecom operators make it very difficult for the subscribers to opt out of their phone carrier network. If you cancel your contract anytime before the two-year contract ends, you need to pay a penalty of 10,000 yen, around 70 pounds or about $100. Now, from our last video, we know that a loss of 10,000 yen feels like a loss of 30,000 yen. It makes it very difficult to opt out. D-O, difficult out. Now, let's say a rival phone carrier company launches a new data plan that gives you double the data at half the price. You will have to wait for the end of your 24 months contract. Only in the last month of your contract, you can request a contract cancellation. But we humans are lazy. It's difficult to keep track of deadlines. So, a narrow time window of the last one month, 30 days of the contract, also makes it very difficult to opt out. Even after all that, let's say you do remember the time window, you want to change over to the double data half price plan from the rival phone carrier, but for obvious reasons don't want to change your cell phone number. So basically, you want to transfer the same mobile phone number over to the rival carrier's network. That gives another opportunity for the telecom providers to exploit the I do frame. If you want to cancel your contract with, let's say, Docomo and move to, let's say, SoftBank or AU, there is a MNP transfer fee of around 3,300 yen. Also, you need to pay some extra fees. Basically, you need to shell out between 5,000 to 8,000 yen in total just to port your number from the existing telecom carrier to the new one. 
add to it the extra time and effort you have to waste in finding the best carrier plans in the market. It needs a lot of comparisons between so many variables such as monthly data limits, data speeds, top-up options, calling options, SMS rates, the list goes on. The benefit of changing your carrier every two years is that often you get amazing discounts on the latest smartphones. Sometimes you can even get free phones. But the problem is most of us are not homo economicus but rather homo motus, motus meaning emotional in Latin. So that's how telecom companies in Japan use the I do frame to keep the customers for a really, really long time. Now, how much does a free trial cost you? Certainly, that's a ridiculous question, isn't it? Beat a one month free trial of Zoom or a three month free trial of fitness apps on all of these fitness tracking watches or even a one year free trial of Apple TV Surely, free trials are free. They don't cost anything. That's why they are called free trials, isn't it? Let's go a bit deeper into how much a free trial actually costs the average unsuspecting customer. Now, in principle, I'm not against free trials. If done right, they are good for both the customer and the seller. To the customer, they offer a risk-free way of trying a new product or service before they actually pay for it. The seller gets the opportunity to understand customer behavior and what actually customer values and what the customer doesn't value. So on the surface, it looks like a win-win. Today we have free trials available from so many different companies that provide beauty products, collaboration apps, online dating apps, online streaming services such as Netflix, Hulu and Apple TV, makeup kits, organic food delivery subscriptions, monthly shaving kits, dieting supplements, gyms, tutoring service, almost everything under the sun. And most people sign up for these products and services because they think they are smart and will unsubscribe from the free trial as soon as the trial period ends. But in reality, customer behavior research at RAND Corporation and consumer watchdogs such as FTC in USA and BBB in Canada and USA have found that between 60 to 80 percent of people who sign up for a free trial actually end up paying for subscriptions, products and services they did not intend to pay for when they opted for the free trial. The main reason for this is that corporations deploy the I do mechanism to make more money off of unsuspecting customers. You see, when you sign up for a free trial, more often than not, you're required to provide your credit card or debit card information. Now, isn't that strange? They are giving you a free offer, but they are asking for your credit card or debit card details. And if you don't provide them those details, you can't avail the free offer. They just want it as a necessary condition to sign up for the free trial. The main reason for this is that when you sign up, there's a small box that's already ticked and it says, in case I don't cancel my free trial, I agree to subscribe to the paid service which will be built to my card automatically. Now think about it for a second. By giving you the free trial and taking your credit card details, the seller has actually changed the frame to already opted in you're already in the group. You're already in the ecosystem. If you want to go out of the group, you need to act. So the frame changes from, should I start using this product or service, i.e. should I opt in, to should I stop using this product or service, i.e. opt out. Now, we humans think that we are not lazy. We are rational thinkers, but actually we are homo motus. We are emotional beings. So we think that we'll remember the date on which to cancel the free trial, but in reality, we are lazy, we don't do that. How many of us don't do that? Well, according to the data from the watchdogs in US and Canada, between 60 and 80%, so let's say about 70% of us are forgetful. So basically, while you think that your chances of canceling that free subscription is 100%, research suggests that in reality, it's only about 30%. Our positive bias makes us think that we will surely do something when in reality, when you look at human behavior as a, as a group, what you find is actually it's about 30%. So to answer the question, how much does a free trial cost? The answer is the median cost of free trials is about $140 per customer every year. That's $140 per year on avoidable free trial fees mainly because corporations know and exploit the I do framing. Automatic in, difficult out framing. We are more homo motus than homo economicus. 
So that was our video for today. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, please press the like button. That way YouTube will promote it to more people and more people will benefit from this knowledge. And if you really, really like it, please do subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.